Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's Church in Nantucket. After opening sentences, our hymn this morning is in the hymn to lift every voice and sing to. We sent out the music earlier. Joanna, you know this one. You know this hymn. It's hymn number 60 in lift every voice and sing. In the rising of the sun, to its setting, my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord. And in every place, incense shall be offered to my name, and a pure offering, for my name shall be great among the nations, says the Lord of hosts. Hymn number 60, lift every voice and sing.
of service continues with the confession of sin on page 79 of the prayer book, page 79. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him.
reading from the book of Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. When the crowds heard it, they followed Jesus on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to Jesus and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. And Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, 
we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And Jesus said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. Jesus looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. They took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the, name of the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. our psalm today. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and the Lord's compassion is over all his works. My rector up in Trinity Church in Boston used to say, you've heard me say it many times, that in the ministry of Jesus, you always hear dishes clanging in the background, right? It's, it's like being in a, a restaurant that has an open kitchen, and you can hear the chef barking orders. You give them something to eat, you know, dishes clanging and, you know, people running around in the kitchen. And so um, being food focused myself, I've always enjoyed the, the stories in the Gospels about feeding. And also the Old Testament readings, like the prophet Isaiah chapter 25, that feast on the mountaintop, you know, where God dries, dries all tears and we see God uh, more fully face to face. Love those kind of lessons. Um, and this is one, uh, it was so important in our tradition, in the early church's tradition, that this particular scene, scene. of Jesus feeding the 5,000 is in all four of our gospels, which is rare. You know, so, so often many of our gospel lessons have um, sources from the Gospel of Mark. They share sources in, in common. You know, Matthew and Luke have other sources too that they, they took Mark and they kind of fleshed out the story with other sources that they had, other traditions that they knew already about Christ. And then John's Gospel is much more mystical, right? John doesn't talk about the shepherds that, you know, on the hillside when Jesus was born and but rather, John talks about the Word made flesh, right? The Word made flesh, mystical references uh, to Christ. But John, too, felt it was so important to include this lesson of, about Jesus feeding the multitudes. And it speaks to the human condition, doesn't it? That we hunger, uh, both physically we hunger, and uh, most importantly, um, equally important, uh, that we, we hunger and thirst spiritually. And so the lesson that, that our Virgin read, Curtis, about, about the thirst, about, you know, from the prophet Isaiah, you that thirst come and receive refreshment at no charge, right? For free, for free you receive the refreshment. refreshment. Through the grace of God, we find that refreshment. And then this, this lesson, too, about the feeding. Um, I often use a book called The Gospel Parallels, um, and it's about the synoptic gospels. And this the synoptic gospels are Matthew, Mark, and Luke, those three gospels, again, because they had, they had sources that were uh, in common, many sources. And so this, this particular book, um, it has uh, three columns, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and it tells you, you know, it comp compares these stories about, about the feeding of the 5,000. Again, in the gospel of Mark um, and Matthew, it was so important, this feeding story, that then a couple of chapters later, Jesus feeds another 4,000 people. It, you know, it has Jesus saying, these crowds have been with us for three days. They must be hungry. Uh, we have to feed them. And so, again, even independently of each other, this, this tradition of Jesus feeding is so important. And you can see there's also uh, overtones, uh, references of the Eucharist, of Holy Communion, where it says Jesus took the, the loaves uh, and blessed, like, you know, said a blessing and, and broke it and then distributed 
uh, by the disciples. So it shows many lessons in, in this one gospel. The compassion that Jesus had for the crowds and is similar to remember when, when Mary and Martha said my brother Lazarus died and it says um, you know, the shortest, maybe the shortest uh, passage in, in the New Testament. It said Jesus wept, right, the, the shortest sentence. Jesus wept. He wept because he uh, at the death of his friend Lazarus. He had that, that compassion, that sensitivity where he wept. So often we think of God revealed in Christ even as stoic and you know, we always say unchangeable, God's unchangeable, but it shows the emotions are revealed in, about God, revealed in, in Christ Jesus. Um, and so, again, the compassion, he had compassion on the crowd, he cured the sick. It says in the other, other Gospels, he had compassion on the crowd because they were like sheep without a shepherd, right? Like sheep without a shepherd, wandering aimlessly, purpose, purposelessly, uh, often, without a shepherd. Um, and so Jesus said, important to feed them. Uh, you know, again, the Eucharistic overtones, but Jesus said to actually give them something to eat. And a lesson too, you know, so often we can say, you know, in these economic times especially, and, and also in the church, the stresses of finances now with us, um, you know, worshiping virtually at a distance mostly, um, gathering in small groups for morning prayer out in the garden, uh, spatially distanced, masks, masks on, um, that, um, you know, people, people are stressed out and we think, well, we have meager resources. What can we do? We have meager resources. But again, with our meager resources, Christ, if, if, the, if we honor Christ with those resources, honor God, Christ blesses those resources, and then we're asked as disciples to distribute them. But our role is to distribute, um, and, that, and then there's so much left over. God gives the abundance, and there's basketfuls left over just from these five... Uh, five loaves and a couple of fish. If the numbers are different in some of the Gospels, it talks about sevens, twelves. You know, we, we think the twelve baskets is a reference to the twelve tribes of Israel. Um, seven, you know, there's a different references of seven in the Bible. My research this week said that we, we've lost whatever meaning it was. We don't know exactly what the significance of these numbers are. But that certainly in the Gospels, they focused on numbers, you know, those numbers, and, and even, you know, it says 5,000, and I think it's in John, where they sit down in legions, hundred, tens and hundreds, are like broken up into groups, almost like the Roman army uh, in legions. Um, but it says, Jesus, Jesus says, it chose Jesus compared uh, concern not only for our spiritual nourishment, but also that people are fed, people are fed. I know now, uh, I saw in the news, uh, some news reports about because children around the world have not been able to go to uh, school, that children are starving. Isn't it not so sad that the school was a source of their, not only intellectual nourishment, but for their feeding. We as a church need to look at now who is most effectively feeding children around the world. Well, concern for the island too, even on this island. Children have depended on school uh, for, for breakfast even and lunches um, and so it's hard to be fed intellectually uh, when you're not fed physically. And so Jesus shows here, also concerned about the physical well-being, the physical feeding of people. And the, again, I went to last, years ago I went to, in Baltimore, to a conference on, on serving and welcoming young adults, teenagers, and children more fully into the body of Christ. And it was a wonderful African-American preacher from St. Thomas African Church in Philadelphia, one of, our one of the first historic black churches in the Episcopal Church. And it was wonderful, the Father Anderson preached about, um, about this very lesson and what he kept yelling at us, and rightfully so, he said, you give them something to eat. You give them something to eat, Jesus said. Not send them off and let somebody else take care of it. Even with your meager resources, you give them something to eat. Um, and so we're challenged ourselves, it's an indictment that we would make sure that children around the world are fed, uh, first physically and then intellectually and spiritually. Our children on the island is also at risk that we do the same. And with this pandemic going forward for a while, uh, we need to be about that, about doing God's work, um, not leaving it to someone else, that we would give people something to eat in every way that we're able. When we, um, I've been meeting with clergy 
uh, weekly uh, from the Cape and the Islands, now on Zoom. We used to meet in person, and of course, me living out 30 miles at sea, I always had to do the traveling. Take the ferry over, borrow Curtis's car, so gracious in that, in that way, find out wherever the Cape, you know, on the Cape it was, try to find the place, meet with the clergy for an hour and a half, two hours, and then, and then come back. Um, and then last year when I hosted in June, uh, nobody came over. They realized it was too far, I guess, just to meet with clergy. But now that we're, we're uh, kind of uh, still on semi-lockdown, we have a Zoom meeting every Friday. There's no, there's no excuse. You don't have to get on the ferry. You just turn on your computer, and there is a group of clergy sitting in front of me. And a lot of, us sing, you know, a lot of people singing the blues about you know, um, struggling with technology as we, as we continue to do. Uh, at all times, try to learn how to learn as we go. I think Joe put it well, we're trying to um, build the plane as we fly it. Um, and, um, and we continue to do that. And blessed to have Andrew Camardi with us to steer us in the right direction. And so these clergy, these clergy times, you know, a lot of people are stressed out, of course, during these times. They miss being with their parish family, as I do, in person, trying to reach people virtually in, in many different ways. Uh, some didn't even attempt that for some months. They just said, um, well, people can go on TV and watch the National Cathedral or something else. But no, no, we want to gather in our own parish family too as, as best we can. Um, and so this week, the clergy talked about Holy Communion, you know, Holy Eucharist, how people are missing Holy Eucharist, as, as I am, and, you know, of different ways that they can kind of get around that. Again, I grew up in, in, in going to parochial school for nine years, we had communion every morning with our classmates at eight o'clock. We'd, we'd sit um, with our classmates. I, we, you know, the goal was to sit, you know, in first grade, we'd, the girls would sit over here, where Joe's sitting right now on this side, the, on the other side, the first grade boys. We'd kind of work our way back by grades. Then finally, when we got to eighth grade, the eighth grade girls would sit here, eighth grade boys across the row. That was like when you, you actually made it, kind of, you know, you place, place a prominence in the front. I still like to sit when I go to church and on vacation with eighth grade girls sat for some reason. I like, you can look up at the pulpit, you know, and preaching and everything and see the organist well. And it's not like sitting right over, over here when I'm not working. And so the clergy this week are, again, singing the blues about missing gathering for communion and different things. And, and one priest said, well, you know, he, he knows that, you know, theologically in our background that we could priests could receive and be a substitute for the congregation. We'd receive on your behalf. And so this priest was doing that, a priest that I do, I do love and respect. And so he would set up at the altar the, the chalice and he would, um, and he would um, pour, you know, pour the wine, do it, say the prayers of consecration, just receive himself on behalf of the congregation. I, I, I don't, that doesn't resonate with me. Again, it's like me having a cooking show up there. I'll make turkey dinner for you. On your behalf, I'll eat your turkey dinner while you watch me having turkey dinner. That doesn't work for me as a great Thanksgiving. Um, and I, I, again, it resonates with me that people are missing the Eucharist. Oh, and someone else said, we're, we're having Eucharist by, after the service, we go out and put it in the back seat of your car, and then you leave, and then you can have it later at home or something in the back seat of your car. That's odd, isn't it? I, I think that's odd, too. But, again, I, they're probably watching now. They watch the tape of this, and I'll be in trouble next Friday's clergy meeting. Um, but I don't believe in substitution. That sounds uh, like the reason we had the Protestant Reformation. And so in the Protestant Reformation, um, part of the... There are a lot of things that were, people were protesting against, right? We're Protestants. We protested. One was that people were worshiping the sacraments rather than God, it seemed like. It was almost, it seemed like superstition. People would parade the host around and get no offense to traditions that do that. I'm gonna get lots of trouble today with this sermon. And, um, but so, you know, when Ollie and I were uh, new out of seminary, our second position was in Wickford, Rhode Island, little village Wickford. Their, their original church was from 1707. And so in the front of the church, because in keeping with the Protestant Reformation, when you face the, the, the very center of the church, there was a reading desk in the center. The reading desk is where I, where I would sit as a, you know, as a curate or the rector if he was uh, leading the service. 
and we would have our prayer books with us, our water bottle, our you know, tissue and everything would be, everything we needed. I'd miss having a reading desk. And then above the reading desk, we'd climb the stairs up and we'd, we'd preach from the center. Then when we went to have Holy Communion, the, 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 the table was on the side of the chapel, not in the center. And it had the Ten Commandments above it in slate, you know, chiseled into slate tablets. And so we would go to that side of the church and have communion. Again, because the, the, in the Protestant Reformation, they didn't want us worshiping the elements. We, you know, we're, we believe that the miracle of Holy Communion happens when we receive it. But it's, it's not some magic the priest does at the altar. It's in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the bread. Right? The disciples distributed the loaves. They didn't just stare at them and worship the loaves and fish. They distributed the, the loaves. Um, and so what I love about, to me, this time of pandemic um, is a correction almost. Again, not God's will for us. God's will for us is health and salvation, that we would know God's love in our lives. That's God's will. And in the middle of, of the freedom of creation, stuff happens, as the bumper sticker says, right? Stuff happens. Um, but God is with us in the midst of all that stuff. Um, and so now I think it's a correction in that instead of just depending on the sacraments to experience the Holy Spirit in our lives, the power of God, the wisdom and enlightenment of God, we turn to prayer together, we turn to our service in the community, our own feeding ministry that we did this summer, uh, supported by the Community Foundation for Nantucket, the emergency fund where they wanted to put chefs and restaurant workers to work, we wanted to feed people, our mission committee organized to have people pick up food at our curbside or just we do also distributed to people's homes much food we can be, we're going to do something like that again um, beginning in uh, September we've talked about that as a mission committee because we know Jesus wants us to feed people in many ways both spiritually and physically so this is a correction in that we like the Protestant Reformation rather than just focusing on Holy Communion we look around and we listen and we, we feel the Holy Spirit acting and bring us wisdom and things that are happening in the world, in the Black Lives Matter movement, in the women's rights movement, um, all different ways we listen and, uh, and where our hearts are open um, and, our, and our vision is broader as we look around and see God revealed through the work of justice um, in, our, in our communities in the world. Um, and then we look around, especially blessed to be on Nantucket, wherever you are, um, we look around and we see Again, life springing up everywhere, new life springing up. It's just an awe of, of God's creation. We see God revealed in creation. We hear God revealed in our, in our beautiful singing and the, and the music J Joe plays and the music that we share together. Importantly, we experience the Holy Spirit. We know God revealed in music. All different ways, right? Um, and so I'm going to go with that for a while. Um, I, I know some priest... Um, I heard someone was using tongs. Mind me, my parents had, um, didn't have a lot of crystal, but they had this funny little crystal pickle jar they'd bring out on special occasions, like you know, Christmas and Thanksgiving maybe, and fill, fill it full of pickles. It had little silver tongs, you know, you little pick it up and you drop it on your plate. So, every, so you know, some, some priest is using tongs to grab the communion and at a safe distance drop it in your hand. I don't know, if, if there's a breeze, it sounds like you're just blow across the yard, so we won't be doing that anytime soon. But so look around, listen, um, stop and smell the roses, feel the power of God in your lives in many, many ways. And uh, this, this will all uh, get behind us, as my dad would say with his really heavy Boston accent. This too shall pass, he'd say. This too shall pass, buddy, this too shall pass. We trust that. In the meantime, we have our strength of our fellowship together, the strength of God in our lives in so many different ways. Well, let's pay attention to those ways. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our service continues with the Apostles' Creed on page 96 of the prayer book. Page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let, Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church, because it cannot continue in safety without your help. Protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And O Heavenly Father, who has filled the world with beauty, open our eyes to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation may be learned to serve you with gladness for the sake of him from whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers to offer before you for all members of your holy church, and their vocation and ministry may truly and devoutly serve you, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our hymn again is in Lift Every Voice and Sing, hymn that we don't have that hymn widely distributed. We sent it out earlier, and it's hymn number 189. Is that right? Yes. 189. You know this one. Great is thy faithfulness.
We now have additional prayers and intercessions. We pray especially for the repose of the soul of Gene Sherman and also of John Wagley. We pray for Bill Sherman and his family and for Gene Wagley and for their family, and trusting their perpetual care to God. We pray for those that are sick in the parish. We pray for Diane's family. We pray for loved ones at Mass General Hospital in the parish, having surgery in these days ahead for their quick recovery and healing. We pray for the doctors and nurses and caregivers, volunteers at Nantucket Cottage Hospital, especially Dr. Faith Frable and nurse practitioner Libby Tracy. Thanksgiving for their healing arts and ministries. Pray for the children of the island and children around the world, for their teachers and school administrators as they struggle now to find safe ways to reopen. Pray for our scientists and research doctors now. The Holy Spirit will enlighten them. We pray in thanksgiving for Alex Michelle Vizina and Logan Scholar Corey, married here today, and whose memory was in celebration, rather, the flowers are given today. Two young doctors as they begin their healing ministries. Pray in thanksgiving for our, our staff, our parish, our leadership. For Joe Hammer, for Ann and Jackie and Macy, they're singing with us. For our Virgil Curtis, for Christine. We pray in thanksgiving for the support receiving from the parish. Thank you for your gifts and support of our ministries. All things come of you, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. And now, finally, in the summary up. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, made us one with your saints in heaven and your saints on earth. Grant that our earthly pilgrimage may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now our service continues and concludes on page 101, the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you and holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to him with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Continue together. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you and your promise to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. 
Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, of the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. This morning's worship is concluded. Let us continue now in our love and service on Nantucket and throughout the world. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.